I don't believe that there is a more appropriate way of starting the video than with back on track because today officially Friday the 3rd of February there is the release of back on track Federico Chiesa a documentary on Amazon Prime that I can't wait to watch why because it's a bit describing the moment of Juventus big problem for Federico Chiesa versus Roma we all remember that big injury and then the journey suffering to go back to the top but it's also today the post game the day after Juve won Lazio 0 in quarter final of Coppa Italia where Juventus was able to eliminate the Bianco Celesti the team of Maurizio Sarri ex-coach of Juventus for the second time this season we were able to beat Sarri one time in Serie A 3-0 yesterday 1-0 yesterday one was important because it gave us the access to play the semi-final versus our eternal rival we are speaking about Inter. Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel. Long time ago that I didn't ask you to put a maximum of likes on the video. Well guys, you remember the beautiful message, giù le mani dalla Juventus, hands off from our beloved Juventus. There was also small written otto milioni, that is representing the active support of Juventus in Italy well we are more than 8 million we are much more than that because don't forget hashtag Juventini of the world what I am asking you today it's putting a maximum of likes subscribing to the channel if you didn't but also to comment where you are watching from even if you are on television even if you are watching as a podcast in your car stop a moment right in the comment section where you are watching from now we can start with beautiful titles on all the Italian front pages that are describing the moment of, ye of yesterday or the game of yesterday the moment of Juventus and then I really want to give my opinion on what happened also the words of Allegri that he's saying that we will play a head-to-head -head versus Salernitana because it can be a salvezza game a game for avoiding relegation the first part is tutto sport that is saying la coppa ci ridà la Juve the cup is giving us back Juventus with a beautiful image of Gleison Bremer a man that really needed not only the win not only the clean sheet but also probably a goal, a winning goal, to unlock himself the first time and the only time until now that he was able to score a goal for Juventus in Bianconero was versus Salernitana. We all know what happened with that cancelled goal to Milik. It was a draw. This time he is the match winner. Man of the match? I don't know. Gazzetta dello Sport is going with a e vera Juve. It is a real Juventus. Lazio that was not brilliant, not fantastic as we saw them versus Milan, for example. But Bremer is deciding the game with that 1-0. Allegri. Now we have to go back in Serie A. Now we have to start back being back on track also in Serie A where we need crucially to make points guys Coppa Italia in this moment is not important it's the only thing that matters <laughs> yes it's strange to speak about that with Coppa Italia why because Coppa Italia is probably the only trophy where Juventus whatever will happen in courts can't be penalized they can't take us away a trophy if we win it they can't take us away some points because there are no points so it is vital because through the win of the Coppa Italia you have access in theory on paper to the Europa League if worst case scenario they are banning us from Europa League or for Champions League European competition the access to it will at least cancel and immediately have effect on the deduction of that participation so we don't have to wait one more year to qualify because it will be difficult to qualify through Serie A. Corriere dello Sport is telling us un po più allegri a bit more allegri speaking about the coach but especially speaking about the enthusiasm of the fans because yesterday yes we won and it looks like an eternity since Juventus win it was not the most spectacular game it was not the most entertaining Juventus but a real solid Juventus defensively and good not fantastic but good in some flashes on the game offensively a Juventus that understood quite fast that playing too low and giving that ball possession to Lazio could have been dangerous but a Juventus that was really alert and attentive especially to a player like Zaccagni that is one of the most informed men of Serie A Juventus that is starting with a 5-3-2 and we all know that that is a big problem, something that can't happen again. 
after these five, six, seven minutes, we have a Federico Chiesa that is showing the way. Not the best game of Federico Chiesa. We know that he's coming back from injury. A beautiful move from Allegri that he didn't play him as a wing back, but this time in a 3-5-2 in duo with Dusan Vlaovic for the first time that we saw them together in Bianconero. Well, Federico Chiesa, from the moment that he touched his first ball, he showed with his body movement that he wanted. And that's one of the words that I want to use. We wanted to do something in front of our supporters. We really wanted to cancel the loss, the shameless loss versus Monza. We wanted to do something in, and it's a paradox, in another world. Why? Because we know the problem that we have in Serie A with a lot of question marks. What about the minus 15? Will they remain or not? What about the rumors that are saying that probably on top of the minus 15, because of another investigation, we will have even more deducted points. They are speaking about minus 20, minus 30. Some people are saying that they will send us in Serie B. We don't know. We have questions and it affects us mentally. Well, if we are speaking about Coppa Italia, it's another world where Juventus was able to beat Monza the only time this season it will remain the only time but also a Lazio that was scaring the most of us I tell you before the game my feelings were not that fantastic and it brings us to the semi-final Juve Inter two times two games to play one time in their home one time in our home we are speaking about April an April maybe with Polla Bil Pogba on the 5th of April in Milano on the 26th in Torino in our home let's see we don't know what about Salernitana will Paul the Frenchman be there we don't know big question mark we don't know if uh, Max will call him up to do a long travel because Salernitana is in south part of Italy or we will wait a bit out of precaution it's not a new injury for Paul but uh, Juventus is yes irritated they are not happy with the moment but they don't want to take any moment on the other side we have Cremonese versus Fiorentina we could say eventually that the one that is going through between Inter and Juventus will have an easier final of Coppa Italia we know that nothing is easy in Italy nothing is easy in football who played well a few words about the individualities well Locatelli for me even if he didn't score was the man of the match a player that yesterday showed not only hard on the field not only defensive skills but also vision with beautiful openings with beautiful long passes a skill that I was super happy to see on the field before him signing for Juventus you remember that really long summer when we were negotiating to have Locatelli we had to wait really long this one was really the skill that I wanted to see Locatelli doing. Yesterday, we had it on the field and I was super, super happy to see a Locatelli that was correctly praised by everyone. Does that mean that because of yesterday, Locatelli is now perfect? Absolutely not. This season, Locatelli had a lot of ups and downs, more downs than ups. Now he has to find continuity because yesterday Max said that he shows more and more game after game that he has that Juventus DNA, that he's playing with his heart and that he's sacrificing for the team. Well, if we are speaking about unity, if we are speaking about the fact that we want all to be together, Locatelli is one of the examples. In a team that is lacking leadership, he can become a leader. He is not yet, but he can become firstly not speaking, not verbally, but showing, being an example on the field as he did yesterday. A real brain. The other one that played fantastically well was Bremer, not only because of his goal, and his goal is beautiful because he was looking for it, but also defensively he was really solid. Locatelli already told you, and the other one is Philip Kostic, that all of us were wanting to see, we were all wanted to see him on the bench because we knew it, that physically it was not a hundred percent. Well, Kostic yesterday played, and that shows again that the, probably the staff of Juventus, they can evaluate the physical condition of players. He played yesterday, and he played probably his best game of 2023. Not difficult, you will tell me. Not difficult because the other ones were not great. Yesterday, fantastic. We did 21 crosses yesterday, 17 in first half, 5 in the second one. Well, one of the crosses was, it's really strange and, and it's really funny. The cross that brought us that goal is not from the left side from Kostic, but Kostic from the right side after a corner kick. And that was really beautiful. I'm happy that we have Kostic because you can say whatever you want. A cheap signing this summer, a player that really likes to play for Juventus and that is showing beautiful things the one that i didn't really particularly like was fagioli 
not a bad game but a lot of few mistakes yesterday and then how Di Maria entered it's a player that uh, I uh, praised the last few games that I was really saying look I'm happy with the performance of Di Maria even if I'm not with Juventus performance well yesterday I didn't like Di Maria mm, he entered with I don't know, N not not the spirit that we needed in that moment of the game. He played a few minutes. Luckily, we didn't go to extra time because I don't know if Di Maria was the answer yesterday. Let's see versus Salernitana if he can show something totally different. Then speaking about a few episodes that uh, were comic yesterday, and I said it immediately during the live, it was that contrast between Chiesa and Patrick from Lazio in the box, a contrast that immediately without thinking i said this is not a penalty and brought me back in 1998 an episode that still today 25 later inter fans are crying for because they say that they lost the scudetto because juventus robbed the scudetto in that moment yesterday an identic exactly thing happened and none of the juventini were asking for a penalty which was really strange at a certain moment was the time needed to convalidate to accept to allow the goal of bremer because they went with a microscope to understand if yes or no he was offside he was on side by 100 meters maybe uh, the new semi-automatic offside rules and cameras or maybe even checking if the supporters were offside if you're a supporter of Juve dressed in black and white and you're offside maybe that counts I don't know what they were looking for but it was quite ridiculous on the other way I prefer that they take their time and they allow the goal than they do ver like versus Salernitana not taking their time not watching the cameras and at the end disallowing the goal of Milik yesterday at a certain moment uh, we had the third episode it was Keen. Keen that was pulled off from the shirt if he falls there it's a red card it's not there that I'm trying actually to complain or to cry or whatever it's just saying that he did really well to continue to stay on his feet if he had the possibility to do it even if he lost a few crucial meters and explosivity but it's the fact that nobody showed any replay of that moment nobody was speaking about it not during the game not after the game a total disaster I finish with one last thing I really want to applaud but sincerely all the Juventini yesterday in the Allianz Stadium also on Twitch also post game on my channel but especially the one in the Allianz Stadium because we are back singing and supporting the team from the first second even before the game until the last second and this is really beautiful the atmosphere in a not full stadium was really beautiful we feel that we want to be united but we also feel the anger anger against what is happening towards our beloved Juventus there is one thing that I didn't like and we say it we say the beautiful things but also the not beautiful things I didn't appreciate at all the whistles to De Ciglio. De Ciglio is not my favorite player. It's probably a mistake of Juventus to extend him. He's a player that is always injured, that you can't count, cannot count on. It's a player that is not offering fantastic performances or some flashes like the one versus Roma, Crotone, and so on and so on. But other than that, he is not a top player. But is it the case to start whistling on a 1-0 in Coppa Italia, a player that is entering the field? I don't agree with that. Whistle during the game, maybe after the game maybe about the performance of a player if Di Maria is not performing whistle Di Maria even if I'm not a big fan of whistles but that's a total right to whistle if players are not performing I'm a fan of whistling after the game after Monza you deserve to be whistled during the game I'm my philosophy is to support 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 after a triple whistle give the whistle but a player that is entering that's not the case that for me that's really not the case no let's support let's be united until the 90 minutes and then we whistle if you want to that that was what i was thinking guys put a maximum of like on the video grazie forza you bet